Hi everyone, I'm GKCS. We are talking about the code jam problem, uh, round 1C, in which there was this baby care problem called partnering parenting. You can have a look at the problem description below. But what it says is you have Cersei and Jamie who have a baby and they're also very busy people so they need to go out to work. So every day Cersei and Jamie have to take care of the baby for 12 hours each. So that makes 24 hours the entire day ends. And you can see that the day is represented in terms of a set of segments. Okay, red is Jamie and green is Cersei. So that's when they're going out to work. Whenever one person goes out to work, Cersei, the other person, Jamie, has to take care of the baby that time. So at this point, Jamie is taking care of the baby at these two segments. And here also. And Cersei takes care of the baby at these segments. Okay, our job is to reduce the number of transitions that you have, the transitions of the baby, as much as possible. So you see, at this part, these three segments, Jamie has gone out, so Cersei is taking care of the baby, and so is it here. If at this point, we assign Jamie the task of carrying the baby in this blue region, blue is undefined. Okay, if Jamie gets that, then Cersei will have to give the baby to Jamie, and then Jamie will have to return the baby to Cersei, and that would mean two transitions. On the other hand, if you ask Jamie to take care of the baby, I'm sorry, if you ask Cersei to take care of the baby here, then that would be Cersei here, no transition because Cersei is here too, and no transition, so that would be zero transitions instead of two, and therefore you have minimized the number of transitions. A few things to take care of here is that, like we said, each person has to take care of the baby for 12 hours. Okay, 12 hours means that if you have already assigned uh, Jamie or Cersei their respective quota of baby care, then you won't, may not be able to assign uh, then this particular segment. Okay, and then it will be an invalid answer. So you need to take care that when you are assigning them a particular segment, it's within the baby quota taking thingy. <laughs> okay, so let's get to the solution. So pick up every blue segment that you can, every segment that you need to assign. And one of the things about these segments is that you can actually assign some part of it to Jamie and some part of it to Cersei. Okay, in a particular case, you have to take care of it. But for now, let's think of them as contiguous segments. Right, a blue segment over here and a blue segment over here. What are the four possibilities that you can have around a blue segment? It could be either Cersei Cersei or Cersei Jamie or Jamie Cersei or Jamie Jamie. Okay, and I have just drawn the two which are, and the other two are mirror images of this. Okay, you can imagine Cersei to be Jamie and uh, you'll get the same thing. So here are the two possible scenarios we have. One is when Cersei and Jamie, basically we have opposite people taking care of the baby around the undefined time. So at that point, if you assign this segment to Jamie, this becomes Jamie's segment. Then there is one transition between Cersei and Jamie and zero transitions here from Jamie to Jamie. So that is one transition. That's one case. If you assign it to Cersei, it's the same thing. It's just a mirror image again. So that would be one again, one transition. So the best case scenario, the minimum number of transitions we require is one. So it doesn't matter whether we assign this to Jamie or Cersei. That means that we don't need to think about these transitions initially. Okay, we don't care, simply put, because we already know the number of transitions required there, which is one. At most and at least. Or, yeah, at most and at least. We'll see why it is at least also, but yeah. What about this scenario? This is more interesting. Jamie and Jamie, if you assign Cersei here, that's one transition to Cersei and another transition to Jamie. So that would be two transitions in the worst case. And in the best case, if you assign this to Jamie, of course, there is no transitions. So the best case is zero. You have zero as your best case and two as your worst case. So you really want to think about reducing the number of transitions here. Okay, uh, in which case you really want to actually fill this gap up with Jamie. Okay, and to do that, you need spare time. So Jamie has some spare time. Apart from the amount of time he takes care of the baby while Cersei is away working, the remaining 720 minus sum of Cersei tasks, let's say. So this is the amount of time that she's outside. The sum of that and 720 minus that is going to be the time that Jamie has free because this is the time that he has to work definitely, uh, taking care of the baby. And the remaining time, the remaining quota of 720 minus that is the amount of free time that Jamie has. 
Okay, this has to be filled up taking care of the baby this much time. Similarly for Cersei. So if this time is actually greater than the free time that you have here, than the un unorganized time that you have here, which you need to assign, then you would fill up this gap. Fine, so we want to fill up these kind of gaps with their respective uh, people's free time. Another thing to take care of is that you might have multiple tasks like these, which could be filled up by one person to reduce the number of transitions to zero. If that is the case, which task should you fill up first? The smaller one, the, the time to assign which has a smaller time to assign basically. Uh, reason for this is because if you're getting the same amount of returns, then you want to spend lesser resources. And here the only resource that you have is free time for each person. So if there is a time to assign between a Cersei and a Cersei, you want to find the smallest such time that is possible. Okay, and you want to fill that up with Cersei's free time first and then subtract from Cersei's free time. So that would be free time. This is underscore is equal to free time again underscore minus minus the time for task. Okay, so that's our strategy. We are going to find tasks which are surrounded by the same people's task, and we are going to go for the smallest one in case there are more than one. Okay, for this strategy we are going to be using a data structure called a priority queue. So this is how we'll start our algorithm. Cersei and Jamie initially have free time for 720 minutes in a day, that is 12 hours. Uh, each person goes out to do some jobs. So in the entire jobs area, you find some work to be done. And if the person who has to go out to work is Jamie, then Cersei's free time is reduced by the amount of time that work will require. Okay, similarly, Jamie's free time will be reduced if it's not Jamie and if it's Cersei who's going out to work. So in this way, you are going to be having Jamie and Cersei's free times initialized to the appropriate values. The next thing you need to do is find all tasks which are unassigned. So now what we are going to do is find out who needs to be assigned what tasks. So initially you have this jobs array and we are starting the counter at one because you are also looking at the previous jobs owner. Right? We need to find out both the owners to make our decision. And we have this variable called alternate, which means that if Jamie and Cersei are assigned tasks around this unassigned one, then we are going to increment alternate and we can't do anything about it. There'll be one uh, extra task over there. And the, the reason for this is because, let's say you have not sufficient time for Cersei to fill up this job. Okay, what is the best that you can do? Nothing. You can, you can give Cersei maybe a part of this job but it's not going to help. It's still going to have one transition in between or two transitions in between other. And in case it was alternating, if this was Jamie and this was Cersei and you did not have enough time to fill up with Cersei or Jamie, uh, it still doesn't matter because even if you did, how does it matter? It's still one transition. I mean, logically you'll never stuff in one unassigned block over here to Jamie and then give these two to Cersei because that doesn't make sense. So we don't need to take care of this edge scenario. So the code is saying that you find out the owners of this job and the previous job. If they're the same, then what you need to do is, if the owner is Jamie, that means Jamie is going out to work in both cases. That means Cersei is staying at home and taking care of the baby in both cases. This gap ideally would be filled up by Cersei. Just like over here. Okay, Jamie went out both times, Cersei took care. And you would prefer Cersei to take care of this because uh, the transition would be zero then instead of two. So the gaps of Cersei, which is basically a map of arrays, a okay, map of arrays, and you add this new job to it. So the new job, we'll see how to construct that, but this is what you're going to do. Otherwise, again, if the owners are the same angle, then you should assign it to Jamie. If, if Jamie had not gone out to work, then Jamie should take care of it now. And you add this. If this is not the case, then yeah, alternate. So how do we construct this new task? You can say that Cersei's new job, the gap that she should fill up, is starting from the end of the first task. So that would be jobs dot get i minus one dot start. I'm sorry, from the end of the first task. So that is n. Yeah, and n is exclusive, so you can actually take this directly as the new start. So 
there is a new job over here comma when does her unassigned task end it ends when her next job starts so that is jobs of get i dot start okay and every start of a job is exclude is inclusive and every end of a job is exclusive so this is correct code okay and this is how you're going to construct the new job which you actually want to assign here and exact same thing has to be done for jamie also okay in fact this job you can you can uh, initialize it right here or here if you find the same owners all right so once you have these jobs you have these set of jobs for both jamie and Cersei separately what you want to do is you want to take Cersei's free time and go on assigning her tasks as long as these jobs get filled up and there'll come a point when Cersei's free time is not enough because you have subtracted from the free time it's not enough for her to actually do the job that you're asking her to okay at that point you stop you go to Jamie and then you start assigning Jamie the tasks that he can do the, the gaps that Jamie is supposed to fill up you start filling them up with Jamie's free time once Jamie has run out of free time, both Cersei and Jamie have run out of free time, so they can't do any more tasks, which means the amount of transitions that you require is alternate. Every alternate requires one transition, so alternate into one, which is alternate itself. The number of tasks that Jamie and Cersei could not perform. So that quantity has to be found out. This is the only remaining quantity into two, because each of the task that they could not perform completely would require two transitions. All right? And this is your final answer. So the only thing remaining is to actually find out this quantity. Let's see. Okay. So Jamie has a lot of free time and he also has a set of tasks that he needs to do, the unassigned ones. And that can be put up as a list. Now, the reason that I put it up like this is because you want the smallest time first and the second smallest second and so on and so forth. That's just sorting, which is an n log n operation. Okay, and almost all languages have n bit sorting functions, so n log n. Take the first task, reduce the amount of free time that you have by that task and kick it out of the queue. Assuming, of course, that you have more free time than the first task itself. So this is 45 was the job requirement here. This is kicked out and your the length of the array now effectively from 5 has become 4. So length from 5 became 4. Okay, you can keep a priority queue actually. It's uh, simpler to implement because logically that's what it does. What's next? Well, from 40 this became 35 because 5 of the remaining time was lost here. Now 8 is what you have. Remove that from Jamie's free time. You have what? 27. Yeah, my maths is incredible. And the effective length of the array reduces. 9. Is that greater than 27? No. So we can actually do this task also. Wonderful. That becomes 18. Yeah. And effective length of the array is 2. Or is it? <laughs> no, the effective length should have been 6. So we started off with 5, so I have got that wrong. Effective length of the array is 3. That's 1 to 3 elements. Uh, next, we have 14 which is less than 18, thankfully, so we can actually assign this task also. And the length of the array becomes 2 after 14 is removed from this queue. Now we come at 16 because that's where the pointer is at. Okay, that's where front is pointing and 16 is actually greater than 14. So we cannot do this task. Jamie cannot perform this task. One of the things that you could do, although it doesn't matter at all, is to assign as much of this task as possible to Jamie. So if if let's say the length was 16, you would take this point, Jamie and Jamie are on both sides. So you take from this point 14 and reduce it to just two. Okay, so logically this is the explanation because two has to remain. Jamie does not have enough free time to fill that up. So Cersei has to chip in. And when she does, there'll be two transitions required. Because of this, the number of transitions required is 2. So, of course, we don't need to take care of that. We just see that the remaining length of that is 2. So, at this point and at this point, 
two transitions will be required for each of these two points. So that is four transitions for all tasks that Jimmy could not perform. And the exact same method will be used for Cersei also. Cersei will have her own priority queue for the set of tasks that she should be assigned. And when she runs out of her quota of free time, you are actually going to multiply whatever the length of the array is into two and add that to the answer. So let's say she has six transitions. Okay. Because three of the tasks could not be assigned. And let's say that the number of alternating scenarios where you have Jamie, Cersei, and an unassigned one in between is five. So the answer then would be five plus four plus six, which is 15. Okay. Just an example imaginary scenario, but uh, this is how you're going to calculate the answer. And complexity required for this is for sorting, your, you need n log n. Each time you are actually searching in this array is order one. Whenever you're subtracting and removing from the array is again order one. So, and you're doing that operation n times at most. So the, the extra complexity is order n, which doesn't matter because the bigger complexity still remains n log n. So that's it for parenting partnering. If you have any doubts, then please leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you want further notifications for these kind of videos, you can subscribe. And I'll be putting the code and relevant links in the description. So until next time, see you.